All right, friends and neighbors. Hey, I got a couple of requests to talk a little bit more about network infrastructure. So maybe we'll do a couple of these. Uh, and right now we're going to talk about uh, equipment racks and how they fit into the whole plan. So to start off with, we have your standard two post equipment rack. And there's a, a sort of standard size that goes along with these. And we say that it's a 19 inch rack, so 19 inches wide. And then it is a 42U. Now, a lot of times we measure network equipment or network devices, network uh, components or network rack components based on their U's that they take up. And a U is just how much vertical space you take up on the rack. And a U is measured as 1.75 inches. Most networking devices that we've been playing around with in Packet Tracer or that you will see installed in a rack will be 1U, sometimes 2U's, uh, and servers can be 1U or 2U. So, you know, like that, that tall top to bottom, and then maybe that tall from top to bottom. So, we, a lot of times we measure a rack in terms of U. And so, racks come in a couple of different sizes, uh, 42 to 48. Again, 42 is the most common size, probably. Now, there is another size for larger equipment, and that's 23 inch instead of the 19. And so, sometimes you see modern telco equipment, things like that, uh, measured in, uh, in those larger sizes. Now, that's a full rack, but of course you can get half racks and you can get uh, even smaller things, uh, cup racks that would mount on the wall, for example. These are clearly going to be floor-mounted racks, and so what a lot of times we do is we either bolt them together or we put, what I'll talk about here in a minute, wire management on the, on the verticals and then uh, attach that to the rack next door and so forth, but they also have holes in the feet and you bolt those right to the uh, right to the concrete. Now there are heavy duty and uh, lightweight racks and, and also a number of different fasteners. So I prefer the heavier duty rack where the screws go right into the rack. So if you start with the idea that everything has got to be mounted to the rack, so let me see here. We've got, uh, here's a Here's a piece of cable management, and I'll just sort of see if I can get this. So this has uh, the mounting holes mounted right to the, the patch panel piece. So hopefully you can see that. Put it against the lighter color of my shirt. There you go. So you put the screws through there. And this happens to be also a 1U piece of cable management or uh, patch panel. Now, how would you mount this to the rack? Well, if you've got a heavy-duty rack, then you might have standard rack screws such as these hopefully you can see that you know a couple of different flavors here and the best kind I really like these because they mount to a heavy-duty rack they screw right into the metal of the rack and the rack itself is made up of uh, steel or iron sometimes aluminum if they're lighter weight but you know they're a little thicker and you screw right into the the posts the nice thing is that uh, Rack screws like this are also, they have a, a, a taper on the end of them. So you, once they go in, they, it's easy to find the hole, and then you get a little thread engagement, and it'll stay there while you screw in the rest of the screws. And then, you know, a lot of gear comes with uh, a bracket or a, a rack ear, like we say sometimes. And, you know, networking equipment can be fairly heavy. And so if you don't have a heavy duty rack, the equipment can actually bend the rack. And so you have to be a little careful about, you know, what is it that I'm going to uh, put in this rack. Now, another flavor of mount or fastener is this style here as an example. So this is, a, you know, the rack screw or bolt, but it goes with a nut and you put this on the back side, and then this goes through. Uh, it's not a preference for me because they can be a little bit of a pain, even though these have a, you know, a little clip on them. But really, the big deal about uh, the rack itself is whether or not it's heavy duty and is going to support the gear that you want to put in there. And this brings us to a four-post racks and cabinets. If you have something that's really, really heavy, or a piece of gear that's really, really deep, sometimes you want to go with a four-post rack. And that's nice because you can put a shelf in there or sliders so that things can actually pull in and out and support a lot more weight. They take up a little more space or can. They're 30 inches deep typically, uh, but they're very, very handy for heavier gear. 
Uh, they can also be enclosed. And when, the minute you're a four-post rack and you're enclosed, we sort of call that a cabinet. Your big concerns for all of this stuff, whether we're talking about the closet or you're talking about the stuff that's uh, mounted in your, in your rack, is weight distribution and do you have room for growth, right? Is the rack going to hold up? Airflow. Now, sometimes the whole reason for enclosing something or enclosing a bunch of gear is to control the airflow through the cabinet, through the gear, to make sure you've got enough cooling. The cabinet also can be locked, so you have security. Uh, now, another concern is power. Now, here is rack-mounted power distribution. This is not power itself, but there is the whole question, right? So this is individually switched, has its own AC power. And so you have your own, own power supply to the cabin, and you can plug all your gear into it. But, of course, there's how do, how do I get power to something like this? So there are a couple of concerns with regard to power. Some data centers don't even use AC power. They feed the whole thing with DC power because, after all, most networking equipment converts AC to DC anyway. But perhaps maybe the best idea is to have a plan. Do a layout and figure out where you want things to go. And one of the most important things to think about is where your cabling is going to go. And that brings us, oh my goodness, to something like this. Now, when we think about a rack, a lot of times... We think just in terms of how we're going to get things plugged into switch ports or, you know, patch panel pieces or things of that sort. But the first question is, how is your cable run going to be managed? When you're installing cable, it's almost always the case that you pull cable from the closet out to the jacks. And so as a result, you've got this massive collection of cabling that's leaving the closet. But that massive collection of closet or massive collection of cabling is also going to be terminated in the closet somewhere. And so you can see a couple things here. Across the top, right, you can see the, all the cabling coming in. Uh, a lot of times what the, uh, the style or management of this is called the waterfall. You can see on the back, these are sort of curved and they flow very nicely. There's no strain. There's no uh, rubbing or abrasion on the cable. And then all of the cable comes in and gets terminated in the back of these patch panel pieces. So when we, I mean, the whole thing is called a rack. And then where we terminate cable, we usually call those patch panel pieces. Now, if we go back to this one here, this one is actually mounting for jacks. And so we have a couple of different flavors of jack that we put in here. And so the jack types might be, you know, Minicon or... Keystone, right? We have a couple different ways that shows you the, the pinouts in there. Uh, so these are RJ45 uh, female jacks, but the idea is that you terminate your cables in the back. So cables come into the rack, you terminate them in the jacks, you know, whatever style you have. And then those usually clip into something like this, the back of it maybe. Uh, and that makes these sort of modular installations. Okay, so that gets you to your cables being terminated in the rack somewhere. And then, of course, you use a patch cable and you connect them to wherever they've got to go. A switch port, maybe even another jack to patch them over to someplace else. Let's get this out of the way. Now, a key to this is how do you manage your cables or what do we do about cable management? So it's a little hard to see, but right here in this diagram, we've got vertical wire management here. So that controls where the cables go up and down the rack. Sometimes you've got them traveling all the way from top of rack to the bottom of the rack. But then there's very clear horizontal wire management here. And what we want is a nice, neat, organized set of cables. We also label our cables so that we can tell where they're going. So it makes troubleshooting much easier, documentation much easier, moves, adds, and changes much easier, and so on. So there's a lot to the uh, the cabling. So maybe the first thing that we think about is, you know, when we're getting ready to populate a rack is where is all of our cable going and how are we going to terminate it? And this is just another example where we can see, again, the waterfall array. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, my goodness, it's so nice. And then we've got the overhead array of cabling, right? There's a lot of infrastructure here. And you can see lots and lots of cabinets, so lots and lots of termination points. And your cabling can also be, in addition to UTP, you might be terminating a lot of fiber there. Now, what else goes in a rack? Well, 
when we're talking about cabling, we say, well, those are the patch panels. And then we've already talked about the wiring management. But what about servers? You can mount entire servers into racks. In fact, it's very common. This right here, this image right here, is a collection of Dell servers that are mounted in a rack. And then, of course, over here, we've got a bunch of networking equipment mounted in the rack. So racks can be organized in a couple of different ways. You might put cable management, a server, and some networking gear all in the same rack. Or you might populate a rack with just servers or just switches and routers and have all the cabling in the back uh, to the servers. So there's a couple of different ways to organize things. You can even put uh, a dedicated keyboard, video, and mouse. So what we might do is install something like this. This is just a rack shelf, right? So this is a, a 1U rack shelf, but I might put a whole standard desktop PC or leave it for a laptop, put a keyboard, video, and mouse, uh, a key KVM distribution switch here. So there's lots of things that I might use a rack for. Now, if I need KVM on the rack, you might actually get yourself a rack mounted laptop. These are very, very cool, very, very handy. And you use that to manage all the gear in a particular uh, rack or pod. Now, lastly, of course, we've got the, the networking equipment itself. This one happens to be a nice gigabit switch, and we can see that it's got the ears on it or the rack mounts. This is actually very heavy, and it's actually got some depth to it. It's got some depth to it, so you would mount this, but I might populate an entire rack with these, but then how do I manage them? How do I set up my, my VLANs and my routing and all of that? Now, the same kinds of things go into a rack, whether it's a two-post or a four-post or cabinets. It's all the same kind of gear, but what about something like this? Oh, my, look at that. We see pictures like this all the time of these fabulous data centers. Look at the cabling. Look at the, the cable management here. What is in each one of these cabinets? Well, the minute you move to data centers, we're sort of going to up our game here a little bit in terms of what we might put in there. So we still need the same things, right? We still need cabling. We still need cable management. We still need network equipment. We still need power, whatever that means. But we might add storage and compute clusters or server clusters. So in the upper right here, right, of, right above me, is this collection of hard drives. So this is just simple storage. This entire thing, which looks to be about 4U, is a Seagate storage rack. And so this you would install in your racks, and you can see it's got the uh, sliders here on the side. And that means that this is in a, a much larger rack, so probably a cabinet. And these are hot swappable hard drives. You just add capacity as you need it. When one dies, it's probably running some level of RAID. When one dies, you just pull it out and put in another one. But in addition, the servers, I mean, look at the size of this thing. This is a collection of servers that would be mounted, and it is high density. So that's one of the big differences between what we might call blade servers and, and a standard rack mounted server in a rack mounted server what you're essentially doing is changing the form factor of a desktop machine and you're putting it in there yes it might be dedicated to a particular task it might be running your network servers in which case it doesn't have to be super high powered but if they're designed to be run in a data center you're supporting lots of virtualization lots of virtual machines doing lots of processing lots of storage lots of connectivity between them then what you want is high density, high power, low footprint, low power consumption collection of servers. And so that is what blade servers are all about. And like the storage, they're also hot swappable. So with the minute we move to something like a data center where that, you know, a data center that's designed for performance, well, we're really talking about similar, similar things, right? Same ideas, but it's sort of next level gear and then of course we can talk about mainframes which are highly specific devices although 
today we talk much more about rack mounted servers and and uh, blade servers okay so i hope you got something out this is a little more detail on rack infrastructure and we know that racks can have a variety of equipment your the two things that you can't get away from right you need cabling uh, it's almost never going to be the case that we have wireless inside a wiring closet and then you need power and then whatever else so it's possible to have a wiring closet with no servers and no no networking equipment at all it's just patch panels going from one collection of destinations to another uh, but then of course we've got a mixed use rack where you've got connectivity and servers and networking or dedicated racks where the rack is entirely filled with one kind of element and then lastly we've got a lot of gear is, is optimized for use in data centers and we saw that with the storage devices and the uh, the blade servers well thanks for watching thanks for listening like and subscribe if i helped and may those packets always reach their destinations no matter what kind of racks they start from